so in the last video we spoke about how this MapReduce framework will going to process the data whenever you have a data you have to process by using MapReduce you have to divide the problem into two stages one is called map stage and other one is called reduce stage so in order to process that one you have to talk about the demons which will going to process your code like how do your HDFS contains a demons like name node and the data node so name node is the storage master and the data node is the storage slave so in the similar way for map reduce also you will have a master and a slave so the map reduce will going to have a master called job tracker map reduce will going to have a master called job tracker so your entire job means i said the driver code for the map reduce is what job object when you initiate when you submit this job object should go and hit the map reduce processing master that is called job tracker then your job will be divided into some tasks because the data was distributed across the multiple machines each job will be divided into some task like task 1 task 2 like that so each task will be processed by the slave called task tracker so the map reduce will going to have a master called job tracker and the map reduce will going to have a slave called a task tracker so your job will be you know how do this job will be divided into tasks and everything we will going to see in the life cycle of your map reduce so the job tracker will going to place a very important role in managing the life cycle you will going to have the life cycle for your map reduce processing framework you know how do you have distributed the file how do you process the file and everything you will going to see that in this map reduce part so let's see the life cycle of your map reduce processing framework okay let's see this is this one so you have a master for processing and you have a slave for processing let's assume that this is your cluster part this right side is a cluster part when I say a uh, cluster part you will going to see all the things let's say I have a name no let's say I have a name node here so name node is in a separate machine and let's say you have a data nodes as well so this is your data node 1 and this is your data node 2 and this is your data node 3 and this is your data node 4 so let's say you have placed a file by using your Hadoop client so this is your a uh, client or a gateway machine so you are trying to place a file when you place a file let's say assume that file name is like this file was divided into four blocks b1 b2 b3 and b4 got distributed let's say the replications also distributed let's see we will work with very first replicas so it was present in the data node 1 it is present in the data node 2 and it present in the data node 3 and it present in the data node 4 so it contains that name node contains all these details so you have the blocks of that file here b1 b2 b3 b4 now you have data got distributed now you have to process it so in the client side you have placed a file successfully now you will going to submit the program so when i say the program the program contains three things right one d is called driver code mapper code and reducer code so whenever you submit this program to the cluster it will contact to the master of your processing framework that is what job tracker so this guy is called job tracker he is the processing master and the slaves will be sitting with the data nodes only look at that job tracker and the name node can be on a separate machines okay we are talking the architecture of hadoop 1.0 but in hadoop 2.0 we will going to have this map reduce part with something called yarn we will cover that in the next videos we are talking about hadoop 1.0 architecture if you understand this arch some company still uses hadoop 1.0 1.x some companies they are moving right now to yarn 
we will going to talk both architecture so first understand your hadoop 1.x architecture okay so here the hadoop 2.0 architecture is called yarn and we will going to see that part as well so this is task tracker 1 and this is called task tracker 2 and this is called task tracker 3 and this is called task tracker 4 so the block b1 was present in this mission b2 b3 b4 and these are all your uh, four task trackers okay see job tracker can be on a separate machine name node can be on a separate machine but remember the processing part and storage part should be on a same machine that's what called data locality program will come here and it will process the data that was stored in that block okay so let's see the steps step one from client you will submit the job to the job tracker when you submit the job to the job tracker the job tracker will give you an id a job id because lot many jobs will be submitted to the hadoop cluster so how would the job tracker identify each job by using an id only now where is your data right now data is in the cluster but the program is in the client machine remember here the program is there in the client machine when you submit it gave a job id and the client will going to create a temporary it's a temporary hdfs folder client will just going to give a temporary hdfs folder understand right so this temporary hdfs folder what this will just going to do right it contains this folder will be a temporary one and it will going to be named with a job id so this is an hdfs temporary folder which will going to be assigned with a job id understanding right so what is the folder name for this one that is what called a job id so third step your client will going to create a temporary hdfs folder with a job id is a clear right so now this is temporary folder will going to uh, create in the third step and in the fourth step it will copy all the dependencies till now data was there in the hadoop cluster but program was there in the client machine is a clear right so what you have to do right you have to copy out the data to the cluster data was there in the cluster already but program is there in the client machine so what you have to do here you have to do it out the things like this the program has to copy to the cluster but till in these steps the program is in the client machine so very first step you submit the job you gave a job id and to the job id you will create a temporary folder in the fourth step all your code your mapper code reducer code all the code will be copied to a temporary hdfs folder which will be deleted after your execution so right now program is in the data cluster and uh, data is in the cluster and programs are also there in the cluster but only at the time of execution it is a waste to copy out the mapper and reducer code to all the machines right so instead what we will do we will just go into store that one in a temporary folder after our program execution this uh, code will copy to their particular slaves is it clear or not everyone okay fine so now in the fifth step your actual run will going to happen so till to this four steps it has set up the required things the program was there in the client machine it will copy out all the program details in the fourth step in that temporary folder created by the third step so now the job tracker knows what are the programs but it don't know where to execute because you have lot many machines lot many slaves but you don't know where that particular file contains its data you have six data nodes but in all six data nodes you can't run the program right you have to know where the date where the file got distributed there only you have to run the program so for this one the sixth step it will initialize the data so it will talk with the name node the name node will going to give out the details about the file this is the file so this is the file which you want to process the file got divided into this blocks and distributed into this data nodes so the name node will give out all the metadata information for your job tracker now job tracker have a programs now job tracker also know the location where data was there so the job tracker goal is what it has to copy the program where the data was there 
So, before it copies, it will check the heartbeat of all the four slaves of your processing framework. So, whether all these task trackers are running properly or not, because it going to launch the job on these four machines. So, it has to check out the heartbeat. So, that is the seventh step. It check the heartbeat of all the map reduce slaves. Is task trackers working fine? Because you understand right now, name node gives a good data nodes locations where you have the blocks healthy. So, you understand that file got distributed like this and uh, stored in this data nodes. Now, the job tracker wants to launch a program on that particular slave. So, it has to know the status of that particular slaves. Now, the job tracker comes to know the status of that particular task trackers. Now, job tracker will say copy the program. So, that is like eighth step. So, your job tracker will say run the job on this particular task trackers, but in that eighth step it will give only command to run, but it will not copy the program. The program was there in the temporary HDFS folder. So, as you know that which job ID I said to the task tracker to run it, what will happen right in the ninth step the program will be copied to that particular location in the ninth step. So, your mapper code will copy to this particular slave. So, mapper 1, mapper 2, the same code will go into copy into this particular four machines in the runtime. Remember here, it happens in the runtime. Now, in the tenth step, you have four blocks. So, you launch four mappers and what will going to happen, right? You know, it will go into, you know, it know that job object knows everything. Okay, the first step I have to see is mapper class. Did we have any user defined mapper class? Yes, then copy to that one and execute there. So, in the 10th step, it will start its own JVM. It start its JVM. All the slaves JVM it will start and then it is trying to process it out. So, from 11th step, I have explained in that in the previous video. Video. So, here you will go into start seeing the processing the data. So, here you will just go into process it out very faster like you know, let us say the mappers will go into execute. So, before you start learning about the previous video, that is at the 11th step. Before that, you have 10 steps. Okay, here mappers will execute like mapper 1, mapper 2 and the result of all these four machines will store it out in a, a single machine and from single machine your reducer code will run in the another machine that uh, intermediate results will be uh, taken at the reducer side and it will process you. Please refer the last video from the 11th step. So, before you process it out you have 10 steps. So, this is how the life cycle of a map reduce Hadoop 1.x you will going to see like this. First step, you submit a job to the job tracker. It gives a job ID and it creates a temporary folder to copy out the dependencies of your job. So, in the fourth step, you will see all the dependencies copy to this location and then it will say start run. So, before it start run, it will going to communicate with the name node and get the details of that particular files and it will just go into process it out by copying the program from that uh, temporary folder. So, this folder and this temporary uh, resultant data will be deleted after your completion. So, this is how the life cycle of a map reduce processing framework will go into work. Is a clear right? So, this is how the life cycle. So, in the next class, we will going to see how it will going to work with the Hadoop 2.x.